This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Almost every automaker reported its sales for the first quarter in the U.S. market, and the numbers came in stronger than almost everyone expected. Automakers sold nearly 3.4 million vehicles, up a strong 24% compared to last year. Even so, on an annualized basis, that would put sales at only 13.5 million vehicles for the year. However, analysts expect them to hit between 14 and 15 million. So that suggests the sales pace should pick up in the months to come. And some automakers had a blowout quarter. Audi sales were up nearly 50%. Kia, General Motors, Nissan, Volvo, Hyundai, BMW, and Ford all posted double-digit gains. But it wasn't good news for everyone. Mitsubishi, Stellantis, and Toyota all saw their sales drop. And in some cases, we're not sure what the numbers are. Genesis, Mercedes-Benz, and Jaguar Land Rover still have not reported their sales, and neither have Lucid or Rivian. Even so, the strong upswing in overall sales suggests there's a lot of pent-up demand out there, despite a sharp rise in interest rates and talk of a possible recession. These numbers show that despite all this economic uncertainty, There are still a lot of consumers and fleets who want to buy a new car, truck, or van. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Recycling batteries is going to be a key way to make EVs sustainable, which is why Bosch developed a fully automated system to discharge and disassemble battery modules. Right now, it can take up to 24 hours to manually deep discharge a battery, but Bosch says it can automatically discharge eight lithium ion batteries in less than 15 minutes. And the leftover energy in the batteries is used to power the recycling station. It's safer because the system can recognize different battery designs, which minimizes short circuits and fires. The technology will be used by the Battery Life Cycle Company, which is building the first automated battery recycling plant in Europe. Located in Germany, it opens this summer and will have the capacity to recycle 15,000 metric tons of battery material a year. Volkswagen is making little improvements to its MEV platform for electric vehicles. For example, the new ID7 sedan will feature a new in-house developed electric motor and improved charging system. The motor drives the rear wheels and generates 282 horsepower and 402 pound-feet of torque. Two battery packs are available, either 77 or 86 kilowatt hours. Based on the WLTP cycle, the smaller pack provides 382 miles of range while the larger is rated up to 435 miles, which is pretty impressive, even though the EPA rating will be somewhat lower than that. Current MBB vehicles are able to charge at a rate up to 135 kilowatts, but VW believes the ID7 will eventually be able to do 200 kilowatts. It's also giving the electric sedan an updated interior which is highlighted by a larger 15-inch infotainment screen. That's up from 12 inches. The ID7 will make its debut later this month. It will go on sale in Europe before the end of the year and is scheduled to go on sale in the U.S. in 2024. Speaking of new EVs, Mini is getting ready to release the first all-electric version of the Countryman, which will be the first Mini model completely produced in Germany. That's because it will only be electric and shares its platform with the BMW iX1. So mechanically, the two are the same. There's two drive setups, 
a single motor option that provides 191 horsepower, or an all-wheel drive system that combines for 313 horsepower. One 64.7 kilowatt hour battery pack is available, which provides up to 450 kilometers or 279 miles of range on the WLTP test cycle. The Electric Countryman is undergoing testing right now and production starts in November. People always complain about sky-high insurance rates, but stop your complaining unless you live in Singapore. If you want the privilege of driving a car there, you have to bid on a COE, or Certificate of Entitlement. That gives you the right to register, own, and use a vehicle in Singapore for 10 years. And because there's only a limited amount handed out each year, prices keep going up, even for a base car. A certificate for a car with a 1600cc engine and only 130 horsepower costs roughly $73,000. Same for an EV with a 110 kilowatt motor. Anything bigger than that? It's about 90 grand. Oh, and there's also about 28% in excise and sales taxes added to the price of a car. So the next time your insurance bill comes in, just smile and relax and pity the poor people in Singapore. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. We're starting to see new battery technology for EVs making its way to the market. That is batteries that cost less and provide more range and Mercedes-Benz's electric G-Wagon, which comes out in 2025, will use a silicon-based anode from a California battery materials company called Scylla that will boost its EV range by 20%. Scylla says by 2026, the company will be able to produce enough material for 200,000 EVs annually and a million by the end of the decade. Currently, batteries use graphite for the anodes, but that adds weight and volume. Silicon anodes can help batteries charge faster and store more energy. But there's one major drawback. When charging, silicon can expand up to three times in size, and that swelling degrades the battery. Scylla says its silicon anode technology limits expansion to just 6%, about the equivalent of graphite. And after 1,100 discharges, which is around 300,000 miles of driving, the battery still retains 80% of its charge, also about the same as graphite. Scylla says it expects a third of all EVs will have silicon-based anodes by 2030, and by 2035, it will be in all EVs. Lamborghini's Revoletto is the company's first V12-powered hybrid, and we've learned from our sponsor that it also features tires that are exclusively custom built for the car. Actually, we should say it's a family of tires because the sizes are staggered from front to rear. There's also a performance and run flat version and they're all available in 20, 21 and 22 inch diameters. The tires, which are made by Bridgestone, feature extremely thin sidewalls, which car designers love to use. And for Lambo owners who want to take the Revoletto out in the snow, they can be fitted with Blizzak winter tires with 20s on the front and 21s on the rear. AI is making its way into everything. In fact, it's growing so fast that Elon Musk and other tech leaders say, we need to pause AI development until we know what's safe. But Ford is using artificial intelligence to make hitching your vehicle to a trailer as easy as pushing a button. The system uses AI, a rear camera, and radars to automatically align the hitch with the trailer. All the driver has to do is hold down a button while the system controls the speed, the steering, and the braking. They call it Pro Trailer Hitch Assist. It was developed in-house by Ford 
and it's available now on the F-150, F-150 Lightning, and the Super Duty trucks. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.